week two, just to follow up uh, with it. There are some games in here that, I mean, I'll watch them, but, you know, I'm not totally uh, just in awe of the Browns play week five against the 49ers. So now they got two Monday night uh, football games. Week 14 looks to be a, be a, a good one, I think. Uh, it's an NFC East battle, which is the Giants at the Eagles. Uh, what if Eli plays well? What if he plays well? Uh, and now it's week 14. People are going to really, really, really uh, get up for this game. Is Carson Wentz healthy? You know, you got to hope that that he is. So uh, those are some Monday night games uh, that they got on there. So the regular games, non-Monday night games, uh, one of the ones that, that um, pointed out to me, let me see if I can find it, uh, the week that it is, because... I don't know what week Thanksgiving falls on because I was hearing something uh, about it. And again, this is I, I want to look this up uh, to get my initial reaction. And for the Thanksgiving game, let's see. Week 11, that game is November 14th, so it should be the following week. Um, no, week 13, that's what it is. So yeah, week 13, uh, that is the, uh, Thanksgiving game. So you're going to have your traditional, uh, play, uh, teams, the Lions and the Cowboys, which I, I, you know, you know how I feel about that, that that should always stay the same. Those teams, that's tradition, let them have, uh, their tradition and don't change, you know, anything that's going on with that. But Lions would be playing the Bears. The Cowboys would be playing the Bills. That is a really surprising game that they put the Bills in because then they are expecting something pretty magical from Josh Allen, you know, and these young, you know, quarterbacks because he was in that draft with um, uh, um, Sam Darnold and, and Josh Rosen and, and uh, Baker Mayfield. Uh, as well. He was the guy with the biggest arm. He was the guy with the most raw uh, raw talent that could be, if he can hone that skill, be one of the most deadliest quarterbacks out there because of his arm. So I am surprised by uh, the Thanksgiving game, uh, the Cowboys against the Buffalo Bills. I, I did not see anything like that coming. Uh, we got a rematch, just a flip-flop in locations. Uh, the Sunday night game, I mean, the uh, Thanksgiving night game is going to be the Saints versus the Falcons. So uh, Falcons lost last year in New Orleans. So now they're trying to return the favor uh, and play against the Saints uh, on Thanksgiving night, which here in the ATL, I am definitely going to try and make that game. I think that's going to be a really, well, I, it's not a thing. I know that game is going to be sick and it's going to be crazy down here in the ATL for people trying to go to that game. They're going to probably be selling those tickets for stupid prices. Uh, but that was the Thanksgiving game. We uh, we talked about uh, the week one game and um, international games. And, and the one thing I don't like about the international game this year, uh, one, two things. It seemed like Jacksonville, they, that might as well be their home. Because I think Jacksonville has played in more international games than anyone else uh, in the NFL. But the other thing is, is that October 6th, for whatever reason, they scheduled the Oakland Raiders versus the Chicago Bears overseas. This would be the first time Khalil Mack is playing against his old team. I want to see that. I want to see it here stateside. I want to see it, uh, you know being broadcasted not at eight o'clock in the morning or anything like that. Like it's going to be over here. I, I just really would kind of thrown by them showing or, or putting them on the schedule overseas. When you got a guy, John Gruden, you got Antonio Brown, you got Khalil Mack. I mean, you got all those, those factors that, that play uh, into this, but it is what it is. So I, I am, you know, uh, I'm lost on it. So talked about week two, uh, the Browns versus the Jets <laughs> getting a Monday night uh, football game. There's another game that's going to be going on. That's a Sunday. And th to me, this really should have been a Monday night game. And, and um, 
I probably would have had just the Browns and Jets playing later, but I get it. I get what they're doing. But the NFC Championship rematch, the the Saints versus the Rams, that game is going to be in week two as well. That's going to be a late game. But these games could get flexed into a, a certain uh, time slot as well. So we, we don't, even though they're there, they're not etched in stone that they would stay there. But that will be a good game to, to go back to the game where everyone talked about instant replay and how all that changed you know the the i guess the the landscape to to a certain degree um for coaches being able to challenge pass interference calls so uh week three uh, i really don't see anything in here that just goes off and i'm like oh wow so uh all the games are, you know, should be good, but you know, there there are those games that do have. It's just like I really, really, really need to watch this. Uh, I think Week Four would be okay. Browns versus the Ravens. That's a one o'clock game. So uh, Lamar and, and Baker Mayfield are going to go at it. That's going to be a, a, a divisional a division game too. So that should be good. Cowboy versus Saints on the Sunday night game. That should be good. Um, Let's see. Got some decent matchups here. I've been through week five, week six. We're not going to go through all of them, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So don't even think uh, that for a moment. Uh, Giants versus Patriots uh, on a Thursday night game. That should be good. Uh, week six. So check that out. And we'll look for one more for another, you know, interesting game. Uh Nothing on week seven. Let's see what's going on week eight. Seattle at uh, Atlanta. That should be a decent game, but uh, nothing that really caught my eye. Dolphins at the Steelers on Monday Night Football. Man, they must know something that I don't know uh, about Ryan Fitzpatrick. But I digress. So we got good games. Right, nothing that, again, that, that has stuck out uh, to me. I want to check a couple more weeks. And and Rams versus Steelers. I think that'll be a good game uh, in week 10. Because I'm hoping Ty Gurley is healthy uh, at that point. And, and he's going to be able to be the old Ty Gurley that we saw. So uh, them against the Steelers, that'll be something that'll be interesting uh, as well. So there's a bunch of bunch of uh other games that's out there we went through kind of skimmed through the first 10 weeks there's another seven weeks uh that's including abides as well that you can check out so uh check your team out see who they're playing uh is there any games that you know scare you is there any games you're just thinking like yeah that's going to be uh, an easy win for us and and do you want to predict how many wins your team is going to, to make you need to go on nfl.com or espn.com however way you want to do it and check out the release of the NFL uh, 2019 seasonal schedule. So now that we got the schedule, schedule, <laughs> play on words, it's time for the Big L Award, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Big L Award, which is the Big Loser Award that we hand out uh, for someone who does loserous things at times. We all do it, and we just have to take ownership of it and move on from it. But before you move on, uh, it got to be pointed out. So I'm going to say this right now. I, I told, I said this earlier during the show that um, this was something I was supposed to do last week, but I gave out the big L to, to someone else and I put this on a back burner. But this is one of those topics where you can always use it. It, 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 it doesn't get old. So normally we will fly somewhere or we'll drive somewhere. We don't even have to do that because this happens all over the place. We are just randomly picking the workplace. The workplace is where we are handed, me and Lopin, and we are looking to hand out the Big L Award to none other than pe- people. Oh, this is getting on my nerves. You know how you have uh, an organiz- uh, organiz- organizational uh, announcement and they'll say, hey, Congratulations to such and such. They got a new position. They'll be starting whatever, whatever. Good luck in the future. Boom, 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 boom. And they send it out to the entire company. 
You know what irks me? It's the folks that like to press reply all. Reply all. Why are you hitting the reply all button? It doesn't make any sense. You look on there and it's probably at least 100 to 200 people on that list. And you can't possibly know all of them. More importantly, the only person that you really need to know is the one person that they're congratulating. And you know how you can handle that without, you know, uh, uh, impacting me? Instead of hitting the reply all, just hit the reply button. Just the reply button. Send your congratulations. Send your kudos. Send your thankfulness. Whatever it is that you got to send to that one person and say, I'm proud of you. But don't be replying back all to everything and then everybody got to read what you got everybody phone or computer or whatever goes off left and right and you're trying to figure out what's going on i am sick and tired of the reply all button because sometimes it is used for wrongness instead of rightness so plain and simple if you are a reply all person on stuff that is irrelevant to 95% of the people that is on that email, you got to take this big L. Ah, see? Another loser. Indeed. Indeed as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official. We got another one in the books. With another Faro Jaro hot beat. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your time. I know I did. Again, if you're in the background, you listen to this live or in the chat room, it's cool. I hope you enjoyed it. While you was watching a little bit of NBA, get back to your NBA playoff basketball. Enjoy it. Uh, get ready for the NFL draft that's going to be going down next week. And then we're going to be talking about who drafted who, who, where they're going, all that good stuff. Uh, well, we'll be talking about it before the draft on next Wednesday's show. But on Saturday's show, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the waitaminuteshow.com, we'll talk about how. Your team might have did in their draft. And we'll talk about more. We'll still be talking about NBA playoffs. We'll be talking about uh, any time uh, big, big stories. And we'll be handing out the Big L Awards. So enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your evening, wherever you are. Enjoy what's in store for you in the future. Embrace it. Enjoy. And battle through it. Whatever it is, battle through it. But embrace it and enjoy it. The struggle is real. The struggle is real, ladies and gentlemen. When you go through struggle, you become a stronger person. Struggle makes stronger. Don't break. Don't give up. Fight through it. So enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll holler at y'all later. So for your man, Jelani, J.B. Bodie, host of this thing called the Wait a Minute Show. We're going to get out of here. Lopan has already left the building. So I'm going to exit stage right as well. And y'all have yourself a good time. Two things as always. Stay positive and push forward. And I'll holler at y'all later. I would say Lopan, let's be out, but he's gone. So I'll say peace. Let's go.